Hello everybody, welcome to my Crit Up painting tutorial. <clears throat> so for this tutorial I took one of my friend's sketches and then did the coloring of it. Um, he goes by the name Every Single Day. He's a talented artist and this sketch is just really, really cool. That's why I decided to use it. Alright, I, first I imported my um, ruler. I have a standard ruler to use the Loomis method for ideal proportions. I copied, I copied and pasted the layer. Pasted it on this and then resized it to see how it fits with the head and the torso. That's showing here. The head is a little tilted, so I tilted part of the ruler for the ideal proportions. And I recommend uh, the Loomis method for ideal proportions. Such a, he was such a great uh, illustrator and teacher, and his books, everything, just, you know, it really works out well. Um, my favorite book from him probably well that's not the topic of this video but <laughs> if you want to know more about that you know comment below and I'll let you know but anyway so I tilt the uh, the ruler a bit and then fix it and then I resize it I fast forward a little bit so you don't have to see the tedium of me raising the ruler lower the opacity of the ruler, refer back to my reference book, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth by Andrew Loomis, and then see if the torso makes sense with the uh, ideal proportions. Now you see the, the line art layer has um, the line art layer has the white attached to it. This may happen to you sometimes also, where you're you mean to like sketch or ink on one layer, but instead you ink on or sketch on the background. So this is what you can do. You can take the line art layer with the white and set it to multiply, and then raise that above the layers that you want to paint. So here I'm labeling my layers, sketch, ink. I intended on inking this, but after some time I realized it might take too long. And um, I'm not the best at inking, and this sketch is already awesome the way it is. So I, I decided to go along with it the way it is. You'll see what I did. Right now I'm seeing, should I ink, should I not? Which pens can I use to ink? Oh yeah, I, I forgot to mention, but this is my first time using Krita. So, I mean, I'm learning as I'm teaching. So, there might be better ways to do some of the things that I'm doing, but this is just the ways that uh, I was able to do with the program on short notice. decided that the torso was maybe a bit short so I stretched it out a bit and then sketched around it you see that I drew right through the hand it's a good habit to draw through your forms. Like I could draw a line that stops at the hand and then continues after the hand, but to get that line to line up perfectly, I would have to guess. But if you just draw through and then erase later, you can get it perfectly. So there's a, a tip right there. 
just adjusting some of this hoodie. I like it a, a little bit differently than it's been drawn here, but it's still an awesome sketch. Some of you might be saying, why is he calling it Krita? Like, because I say manga, and some people say something else. But, like, um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to pronounce the name of something, you might get it wrong if you've never hear, hear, heard anybody say it. But, I mean, sometimes you just got, got to go for it. I heard a story when I was in college. One of my professors said that he was at a convention, right? A science professor. So he got up there to speak in front of uh, hundreds of people. And he pronounced a, a, a scientific term, and half of the people laughed. They were like, why is he pronouncing it like that? And they laughed. And then another guy got up there, and he was talking about something uh, related. And he used the same word, but he said it differently. And then the other half of the room laughed. And it was like, okay, so it doesn't matter how you say it. Everybody's going to laugh. Just go for it and don't worry about it. And I think that's part of being an adult. You have to just go for it sometimes. Okay, so what I did with the sketch layer was that I copied it and set both uh, copies to multiply. And in order to get get it so I was able to move the hand and retain the multiply on both layers I set the those layers into a group um, and then and then move the um, pinky the the part of the hand that I wanted to move and then um, I merged that uh, group layer into one layer and then that was my, I used that as the sketch layer. After I fixed everything, that was my sketch layer. But I kept a copy of it just in case I need to go back or if anything went wrong with the copy that I was working on. You see me like stumbling around. It's my first time using Krita and you know, there's a, a bit of a learning curve to every um, digital painting software. There was one with Photoshop, Clip Studio, Sketchbook. But, like, they're so similar that what really matters is your art artistic ability, not whether or not you understand Photoshop or you can use Painter better than anybody else. If you can paint, then you can paint and nothing's going to stop you from painting. <sighs> Respect and props to every single day. Look at the way he shaded the hair. Doesn't it remind you of like um, manga when you see those characters, the hair just um, rendered with the, uh, is it halftone? Yeah, I think it's halftone. With the halftone, um, it just looks really cool. Okay, so now I'm going to create my um, base fill layer. It's going to be in red, and it's going to act like um, a silhouette for me to always refer a selection to so that I'll be able to paint without going outside of the lines. I could always just select that fill, base fill red layer as my selection and then on an, another layer actual actually paint but it it'll be restricted to the selection that I have oh and here's me trying to figure out how to reduce the size of the brush change the size of the brush but I googled it and I figured it out There's a way to do it with the keyboard, and there's a way to manually do it on screen. I, I think I'm more partial to doing it on screen. Just the keyboard method, you have to, you kind of like, I don't know. There's I have a mental block with that. Even in Photoshop, I always change 
the size of the brush with uh, right click rather than um, the brackets the hotkey yeah I think I'm gonna give more consideration to Krita because Photoshop is just it's it's not very expensive but the amount of money that they take from you it adds up over time and I've been I think I've been using Photoshop since CC since maybe 2015 and I just I just need a change so I'm gonna focus on other painting software that's either a one-time fee or open source like Krita Oh, I just imported my um, color palette. So this is the color. These are the colors that I'll be using for most of the painting. Here we go. So I'm going to create a gradient. I really wish I could have found out how to use clipping masks in Krita, but I'll I'll look into it later. Anyway, right now I'm creating a gradient layer. And I'm going to create gradients for the character. The way I did the selection was you go to the base fill layer and on that thumbnail you press control and click and it will select everything in that layer. That works in Krita and it works in Photoshop. I think it works in Clip Studio Paint also, but uh, that's how I make my simple selection without having to trace everything over or use the magic wand. Here I'm just trying to figure out how I want my colors to look, w w in what order I want them, stuff like that. I could have left it like that with the red at the top, but I I really wanted the yellow up there. So it goes the other way around. Sorry that you have to sit through this. It's a little boring, but what are you going to do? I think now what I'm doing is trying to figure out how I'm going to use these colors. I lowered the opacity to 56% and the size of the brush is not important. But um, I'm trying to see if I can brush and, and on-screen blending to get a color that's pleasing for the skin. I end up going with um, a golden yellow for her skin. Yeah, so it's just painting, painting. I fast forwarded because it's pretty much the same stuff. Just filling filling the areas with color. Move on. Let's see what's next. Make sure to label all your layers. Even with only a couple of layers, it can get pretty hairy sometimes thinking, oh, is it this layer or that layer? It's easier to just label them something you can remember and not have to worry about it later.
here I'm just outlining and then I'm going to fill it in and, and paint where it needs to be fixed a little if you see me do something and you're not sure if it was magic or like it just happened it's probably me just using a hotkey so I mean if you have any questions just let me know in the comments below I wanted you to see this part, me painting the the light, the um, teal or blue green onto the clothes. So you know there's no like special like blending mode or anything. It's just normal mode. I just um, m using lower opacity with my brush, 39% opacity, just brushing around with the color. Trying to get like the um, is it the folds in the clothes or the wrinkles? Something like that. It's not perfect. I didn't use reference for the um, for the painting, so it's like you have to kind of invent the way you think things would go from your experience of doing life sketches or reference or studies for, with reference. You know, just draw on your experience and see how it should look. Here I'm mixing up my palette, trying to see what colors would go best, while keeping in mind my color scheme that I set out on the left side earlier. So there's my palette layer label. Now here's the shading layer. Now, I think the color I used for the light is actually this uh, greenish yellow. So, I ju at first I just want to see what it looks like. So just add it to the skin. And then later on I'll refine it and maybe change the color a bit. But I pretty much am not sure exactly how I want it to sit on the face at first. I'm thinking what what might work and how d you know you just push and pull and see what feels right sometimes and then sometimes you just you might come across something and say well if I did this you know it could probably work out well and there you, and there you go you just figure something out but I mean some of this draws on the experience you have from previous paintings and drawings and sketches so I mean it's important to keep a sketchbook or just do daily drawings or just draw every once in a while just for fun and see what you can learn do studies Just experimenting to see what might work. Looks kind of like she's wearing a mask. And she's not supposed to be wearing a mask, so the mask comes off. 
here I'm using that pink as kind of like a shadow color. I think I finally like figure something out as to what I'm going to do with the face. So there's me just working it out. I was pressing Control Y after Control Z because if you know the um, Photoshop hotkeys, Control Y is redo, Control Z is undo, but like it kept giving me this weird lighting effect to the canvas, so I'm not sure what that is all about, but you know, you gotta work with what you have. refining how everything looks I settled I finally settled on how the face would be light um, how the light would hit the face Just checking my colors. At this point I was trying to change the color of the line art. Um, at first I was going to use alpha locking, but then I remembered that there's a white layer with it, so I couldn't do that. Then I was trying to select a, a color range, like in Photoshop where you can select certain colors on a layer, but it didn't work out. But I did run across something that I thought that was... Uh, pretty cool or useful here we go so I had this red layer uh, this red fill layer I filled the layer in red and I changed the blending mode to addition in Krita and then I lowered the opacity of the addition red layer Like right now, it's looking really bright and really, really cool. But I don't think this blown out effect is going to work for me. So I ended up um, altering it just a bit. Yeah, so I lowered the opacity of the... Um, 
of that red layer. Create a new layer, set it to render. And basically now you just go over all your lines, go over all the rough areas, and just paint and use the um, color picker to to choose colors and paint over and make things look smoother and just better looking. You know, now that I think about it, no. Well, I got what I got. Um, yeah, I could try it in a different way next time. Totally see if I can get a better result. <sighs> this sketch is so cool. And you know, I don't usually draw, I, I don't draw in a style like this, but like the good, good thing about art is when you see something that looks good, you can like really appreciate it. So, I mean, you don't necessarily have to do this kind of art with, with the drawing, but like when you see it, just appreciate it because it's something special. So I outlined the hand because normally I would just change the color of the line art, but I couldn't do that. So, And I'm also covering up the other lines for everything else. Yeah. I added some of this yellow to the top side because I felt like that's where the light would be hitting. Which is true, but I don't know if it would actually look the way it ended up looking. So, but it's okay. It's, we'll get it better next time. You can only go so far before you have to call it quits on something. So I fast forward it a little bit and then just rendering the hand just trying to make the forms look three-dimensional and the lighting look uh, consistent. Can I say consistent? Because it's not exactly realistic, but it's stylized and trying to make it look consistent. Some of the things that were in the original sketch, I should have probably kept. But I was trying to simplify, simplify, simplify. Outlining some things in a deeper color.
working on the face a bit. Let's see if I can refine it a bit more than it already is. Outlining the nose, the eyebrows. And I'm going to go to the eyes, the lips. Love the subtleties in the face, the lips, the eyes. The way he drew the mouth made it so easy to add the lips. It was like everything was suggested right there already. So I mean, I had n I had almost like no work to do. I just placed the lipstick or the color of the lips where I had it. I left the hair the way it was. Here I'm covering up my palette with some white paint. But I left the pa uh, the hair the way it was because I really like that style. I wish I could have integrated it more and <sighs> made it look more consistent with our coloring. But as far as it goes, I really enjoy seeing it the way it was. So I didn't really touch it. Yeah, I'm trying to f figure out a background to select the uh, um, to select around the character. I use the magic wand tool. Here, I'm creating a layer above. I'm going to do a gradient, some kind of um, greenish yellow. I want her to really stand out, so I'm gonna mute the background colors a bit. Yeah, I like it better like this. So there's that and then add a circle behind her. Something in contrast. And now what you can do is select the base fill layer again. So you have that outline, and then you go to the to this circle uh, layer, and you totally just delete the character from it, the character silhouette from it, and then you'll have something nice without the colors covering or you having to spend all day working around the um, the character with color. I just work on this a little bit more. Just smoothing out the face and the upper body of it. It's a really rough painting, but get the idea of what we're trying to do here.
we could go over it a few more times with a few more layers of just rendering to smooth things out but this gets the job done, done and the point across that you can create beautiful artwork in Krita or whatever painting software you have it just takes a little patience and some thought and there it is I'm uh, adjusting the hue the saturation and the lightness a little bit for my is this the render layer yeah the render layer it gives me a little bit of color variation saving the file The face would have looked pretty cool if I left it like this. But that wasn't what I was going for with this um, style. So, I mean, it's nice to see the happy accidents that could happen. But sometimes you want to stick to what you were going for and try to achieve the, um, the actual finished product that you, you were looking for in your painting all along. Just looking at the layers, checking things out. I think I saved this one. It's flat color. Okay. So I was looking to see if there is another extra maybe a better way to blend in Krita and I did realize that there were um, blenders like uh, not just um, not, you don't only have to you don't the only way okay blending with the brush and the uh, um, eyedropper is not the only way that you can blend in Krita there's actual blenders like um, there's a Q-tip, there's also um, a ra two rakes, some brushes that do blending, and this is how it looked when I reopened it. So maybe I should have saved it under a different format or a, a higher quality, because this is not what I, this is not what we saw when we finished the image last time. I don't know if anybody knows why it turned into this with like the colors changing and stuff like that you could probably comment in the, um, in make make a comment in the comments below and let me know so that I can fix it next time it's not horrible but it's so much sloppier than what I actually put put into the save file last time Okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm creating a a group, and then I merge, uh, and then I made a copy of the group and merged the copy, so I would always have my original files, so that if I don't have enough undos and I wanted to go back, I could always just uh, make a copy of my original files and redo it. Here I'm blending with uh, Q-tip all the way on the right in the um, brush panel and I thought it might look good but it, I didn't like the way it felt so I um, had to start uh, redo it I um, threw away that layer and made another copy of the other one and totally tried again there are other blenders so I tried a couple actually I think there are two palette knives that blend and I tried both of them I really like this one though 
it's called a rake and it, it leaves like these line these fine lines in the direction you're pulling or pushing I thought it was pretty cool Trying to refine the face so the colors seem uneven in a bad way. But eventually I decided to let go and just let it be what it is. I think I come back one last time. After bringing it, after bringing it into Eclipse Studio Paint to blend a little then uh, um, then I pull it back into Krita and see if I can finish it off there in, um, in Clip Studio Paint I adjust the colors of the skin at at the moment when I was doing it, it looked okay, but right now it seems a little too saturated the, the skin color. But it's not the worst thing in the world, so I just leave it as it is and blend a little bit more with the brush blender in um, Krita. And that's pretty much it, just blending and seeing how it looks and finishing touches and that's pretty much it. Save the file. Uh, remember to save it at a higher quality next time. And that is my tutorial. Have a nice day.